Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Good. So uh, I'm Rasmus Benestad. I'm from the Norwegian Met Service. And uh, I'm in the front line together with, like at Met Service, we're no longer Met Norway, we just Met, uh, with CSU and Bjarkenes Samarbeide to bring the conclusions of the IPCC to the society. That's our, our job. But the talk I'm going to give today is not really about Met. It's, it's about real climate, which is um, it's like an NGO in a way. It's like a, a something that we did um, on, on the spare time, myself and some colleagues. It has been called a sort of climate guerrilla. Um, so this is the uh, thing here, right? Uh, by the way, real climate is almost 10 years old. It will be 10 years in December. And I'll just give you some highlights, and then I'll share some experiences, some thoughts, and what we learned. And I think that will also tie up to what Jonathan Lynn talks about as well, from the IPCC. So we are seen as a bit of re rebels in a way, and our main sort of reach has not been in Norway so much. I know some people hate us in Norway too, but in the US, um, and I'll come back to that. So what is actually real climate? So it's a blog, it started 10 years ago, 2004, uh, and there were a few more contributors before here. Uh, Michael Mann was one of the most sort of famous guy, but the guy who really drives real climate is Gavin Smith. He, he received a reward from the American Geophysical Union 2013 for his communication skills. He's been interviewed by the New York Times all times, and he's a very good communicator. We are all scientists, okay? Uh, but we don't speak very cryptically. We try to, we've actually learned over the 10 years to actually try to express our, ourselves more clearly, clearly that people can understand. So, let's see, is that working? Yes. So the sort of main objective of, um, of reclimber was based on the frustration that if you wanted to correct the media or things sort of uh, talked about in, in the public space, the old, the old way was to publish something in a journal. That would take two or three years before it all got corrected. So we wanted a quick response mainly within maybe days or even hours sometimes, to comment on things that were sort of obviously wrong about climate sciences in, in the media, uh, mainly in the US. And we wanted to provide a context of all the, the, the issues that, that have been discussed so people actually get a sort of broad understanding of what are they actually talking about, not just like very focused, not very narrow, but give you a broad background. And it had to be restricted to the scientific topics. So we only talk about sciences, and we, be, we are precise, but we use a language which people can understand. And I think actually that if you go and look at the IPCC and they say that it's very precise, I will say no, because they use lots of jargon catchwords, like uncertainty, that means a lot of things, and actually mean different things to different scientists. So I think even in sciences, people are not as precise as they can be, and you can even be more precise speaking in a plain language to some people sometimes by being more concrete. So just some highlights there. 2006, we were surprised. Uh, Nature called us and said that we were number three, the th third biggest science blog in the world. Okay. That was a science blog. Uh, so, and... and uh, and we were like, interviewed and things like it in the US. I think we were actually uh, uh, beat by, uh, uh, beat by uh, some blogs on uh, intelligent design and like, you know, biology or something like that. Um, and then later, uh, that was in, um, I can't remember what it was, it was 2006 as well, I think. The Time magazine uh, gave us a, um, a, a notice saying, just heads up, Real Climate, you were selected as one of Time Magazine's top 15 environmental sites. Uh, we got a Scientific American Award for being uh, a best uh, blog. We teamed up with The Guardian, so we have a collaboration with The Guardian, so The Guardian can use anything that we write, and we can use anything they write about climate sciences. Uh, so we had... Um, 
a, a big impact on various uh, media. We, uh, we even were debated in the US Congress, uh, and I guess the sort of greatest sort of uh, evidence that we had a big impact was uh, during the Climate Gate Affair. You, hear, you remember Climate Gate, 2009, 2010? The, the uh, batch of emails and files were stolen from, by hackers from the Climate Research Unit in East Anglia. A week before that happened, the hacker hacked into ReClimate with a whole lot of uh, emails, everything. And Gavin was sitting in, on, on his uh, terminal working on, on some business on ReClimate, and he realized, realized something was really, really wrong. He was kicked out. And then he tried to log in the sort of the old-fashioned way with a terminal. He was kicked out again by the hacker. So he contacted people who actually maintained the site and took it down, and then managed to... We changed all the emails, and we saw there was something really wrong. In, there was somebody who had hacked up a, a, a big wide of, of files and said, uh, this is good news or something. And, and, and we managed to remove that, but, but we realized it came from East Angle. We gave Phil Jones I had up and said that there's something is wrong happening. And then a week later, it all exploded in the, in the media. And even a week after, they even got a T-shirt, okay? And mugs, everything. High the decline. Uh, sorry. They had this sort of slogan, high the decline, which is based on, on a, a mix of the stolen parts of message from one email from 1999, and then moved it to the present time, and really distorted the whole facts. And throughout the, re, uh, the, uh, the climate gate affair, reclimate was trying to sort of provide the context and provide the facts and actually correct the, the lies about the, clear, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the affair. And there was only one newspaper that really covered the whole climate affair in detail. That was actually close to the truth. So guess which one that was? It was at Guardian, and they actually described it as, as, a, as a sort of uh, drama of Shakespearean scales. Nobody else knew, uh, apart from the Climate uh, uh, Society and the IPCC as well, because they really got real flack. And uh, reclimate has sort of made us, uh, an, an impression on, on various... Um, Newspapers around the world, like often New York Times or uh, uh, US Today, The Guardian, and so on, uh, and has just one sort of uh, count. I think uh, there were more sort of uh, appearances later on as well, but we sort of got fed, we got a bit tired of sort of keeping track of that. I know that in 2011 I wrote one blog on on real climate, and, uh, and an hour later it was to, uh, it was uh, cited on the USA Today. Um, uh, 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 website. So, but it's not just real climate there. There are lots of different um, different actors around here. So you have the IPCC, you have the World, World Climate Research Program, you have uh, EMS, European Meteorological Society, you have American Geophysical Union. Lots of actors there, and they all provide uh, uh, information about climate to this, well to various um, uh, targets. So. What is the sort of uh, what went wrong then? What is it, what is the impact? And we uh, already see that, like you know, the the the, the, uh, the uh, greenhouse gases are increasing. It's like uh, being on the wrong wrong course, just like a sailboat here. You see that it's going upwards here, uh, but and you see the sailboats sailing in here. The height to change the course. We know that has it has to happen. Otherwise, it will end with a sort of a bad situation. Um, part of the, uh, the, the story is, is that, uh, and the reason, I think, for why you can do, for, uh, continue that way, is that you have some reactions. You have a new story, basically conflicting views. That is a story that is, that is come, emerging. And even in Norway, you have uh, sort of a, uh, a group called Klimagelistene, uh, who are teaming up with American think, think tanks to try to spread a completely different uh, sort of uh, message, uh, provide a different picture of what is happening. Uh, one good thing is, of course, like you know, it's good to debate these things. But another good thing is that both we and these, this group think that information is important. Otherwise, they wouldn't do it. 
So the, law, uh, the fossil lobby also believe in, 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 uh, in providing facts, information. So what went wrong then? Uh, one thing, and I think this picture here from Asterix summarizes the whole thing. Uh, I think we ended up with a very polarized view, like two different camps. And you know, how either, uh, like, you know, yes, it's happening, or no, it's not happening. Uh, there's been a lack of understanding, uh, I think, also between the different groups. I think the climate scientists haven't really understood the sort of the, uh, the, the people who oppose them. Um, there have been unfavorable attitudes, and that was shown by the Climate Gates affair, like, you know, people actually trying to destroy and actually try to uh, uh, spread uh, false views. But also the climate scientists, I think, have been a problem. And as, uh, I think Jonathan Lynn just touched upon that a bit. Okay. So, again, I, I want to show a sort of different way of what Jonathan said. Uh, a, Climate scientists start with like basically introduction, and they start with small things like you know start a story with the sort of things that people already know or like not really interesting. So it's like you know if I should explain this to climate scientists, you start with adding one plus three plus thirty thirty-eight equals forty-two. This is like a math teacher, right? And if you try to turn it around, and say no, the answer is forty-two, and then you say, but this or the story. The story um, is of 42, so it's, it's, it's 38 plus 3, 3 plus 1. It's, a, it's equally true. But if you turn it around and start with a headline and then say, why are, why are we thinking that way? Then people say, no, 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 this is very unscientific. And I think it's not necessarily wrong. We have to think this way. We have to start with the headlines and the most important points. And this is something we also learned writing at Reclimate, but also at Met in Norway, that we, we, we prepare. Our job is to provide a clear message in plain text so people actually understand what we're talking about. Uh, the other problem is that um, the issue is very complicated. You have lots of maths, and if you, if you talk about maths, people like, you know, completely shut off. Like they, they get scared of maths, I'm afraid to say. Uh, that's a good way to turn off a journalist and say, I, I just give him a question and it just stops straight away. Uh, and also science, you have physics, you have uh, statistics, you have uh, chemistry and biology. And this is quite tough. You have to tell a story. You have to take some time to provide that. It can't be uh, sort of superficial. So the way ahead here, and I have some sort of, I'll tell some of our lessons that we learned, and also some thoughts, and maybe some potential fixes. So try this then. And I hope the IPCC will improve, because I, 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 I think there's room for improvement there. So, um, tell stories. There's always a story behind a conclusion. Like I said, like 42 has a story behind it, right, in this case. Uh, how do we know and why do we know this? That is important. And also, what do we not know? We have to be honest. And actually, what we do not, do not know is actually often some, sometimes the most interesting because that shows, like, you know, we have something... Um, to do, to, to do research on, something to look into. It's a, it's a bit of a sort of a um, detective story here, right? Also, another thing, you have to be likable. Um, and this is something that I think uh, Kirsten Halvorsen knows very well. All the politicians know well. This is some, uh, a message from Randy Olson, who is a communication expert in the US. A lot of scientists are really harsh and really strong, like, you know, and not, and not, do not come across as being friendly. So you have to be not arrogant, and you, and you shouldn't be behave as be much better than anybody, any, anybody else. Uh, you have to use plain text, again, and not use cryptic uh, pictures, and also uh, bring out the headlines and also roll um, headlines. And you can do this by making some role models. You have to t uh, and you have to work as a team because it's hard for one person to do everything like this. You have to co you have to sit together, discuss, and you have to find a sort of good way of presenting a, a story. Um, and just one example here, like you know, this is a di completely different type of uh, graphics to what the IPCC shows. But these kind of graphics can maybe tell a story. You can just look at it, and it just the story uh, sort of springs out at you, rather than having these very uh, complicated ones. I also want to move on to the NGO kind of aspect that um, Kristen Halvorsen talked about. 
um, I realized that just talking like the uh, blogging is not very efficient. So I, I, and I got involved with Techna, we, and together with some, uh, some of my some colleagues or friends, we started a group called Techna Klima. And w through Techna, you have an informal network. You talk to people who are engineers, who actually are, are at the receiving end, end of, the, uh, of the climate information. You talk to people who are interested in solutions, in the renewables and emission cuts. This is an effective way of working, I think, because we have meetings and we, have, we meet the people who are engaged and really want to do something about this. And you don't have these sort of institutional barriers. These are personal networks, and it works in addition to these sort of institutional networks. And the idea is that I want to talk to techno oil and gas, the oil and gas sector, to get a common understanding, because they have a different picture about what the climate issue is. I talked to people in the oil and gas and said, we read the IPCC report, but we, but we didn't understand it. So that is a problem. And also, through Techna, I think we should also teach them the science, the way that science works, like testing the some controversial issues and p pinpoint exactly where we disagree, and maybe the science test to shed lights on the questions. So, and actually, it's an opportunity, because through this, we can show the value of knowledge, which is not really being shown. We can, we can demonstrate how the scientific method works. This is a golden opportunity. Uh, we, can, we can show that basically science is universal and it should be, re be able to re be, be re replicated. Uh, we can do it in a, cap in the, in a pedagogic and capti captivating way. And also we can do it with more tangible uh, things like not just the abstract sort of uh, something is happening up there, but actually show with through demonstration like CO2 absorbs uh, 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 like infrared uh, light. But this requires uh, resources, and uh, I don't know there are, if there are uh, resources available. But we are working a little bit through Techna, and I hope other people, like say at universities, actually spend some effort trying to do this. It's like communication, not just by talking, but also by showing. Um, there are things that we should avoid, uh, the sort of dogmatic and superficial discussion that has been so far. Uh, we should also avoid having the discourse framed by so-called sky dragons. Stephen knows what sky dra dragons are. This, this is a term for people who do not believe that uh, greenhouse gases uh, cause a global warming. Uh, we should avoid propaganda and also try to call out the false prophets and charlatans. There are a few of those around too. Uh, and also avoid the cryptic messages, so we have to improve the way we, we um, discuss things. Um, so this is actually my, my, my uh, final slide, and I hope I'm in according to time here. So was it worth it with the real climate? Did we make any progress? Um, I don't know. But at least... Uh, I think we made maybe an impact in the U.S. And when I know that uh, maybe the Democrats read us. So, and uh, maybe not so much in Norway. And then yeah, I just actually I just find uh, sort of a message, and, uh, so a kick to Cicero and also the IPCC. Uh, and I hope Christian hears me now. Uh, we need to collaborate better, okay, throughout the institutions. Uh, and then we had to talk with people, not just talk to people. We had to have a proper dialogue. And then I think we also had to get the science into the discourse and try to understand how the science actually works. We can always, if, if we disagree with, uh, with each other, we can say, let's design a test and see if we can do a test and, and, or, or see if we can falsify one, one of these uh, ideas or these arguments. And, uh, but it, it takes work, but I think it's, it's fun to do that. Thanks.